What up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be reviewing Sword Art Online, the board game, The Sword of Fellows. Now this is published by Katokawa, Katokawa Publishing I believe. They handle the anime and everything else related to Sword Art Online so they cover the board game as well. However, if you're looking for it over here in North America, it is Japanime Games that is handling the distribution. Now the game is designed by Seiji Kanai, who you may remember from Love Letter fame, unless I'm getting that wrong, but uh, if I am, It'll pop up somewhere on the screen saying, Jason, you're an idiot. <laughs> now, Julie will <laughs> take it away and tell you a little bit more about the game itself, as well as a little disclaimer. Uh, so this is a review copy that was graciously provided to us by Japanime Games. So thank you to Japanime Games. But we'd also like to remind our viewers that uh, though this is a review copy, our opinions are our own. Yes, and I really just want to say thanks again. I asked to get a copy of the deluxe edition uh, I do have the original, well, not the original, the standard edition. It's just trapped uh, on the other side of a border right now. And we will be doing a giveaway for it at some point, hopefully this year, <laughs> not next year, when we can finally get our hands on that copy. Sounds good. So this is a cooperative game uh, that is intended for ages 10 and above. It plays one to four players in uh, about 30 minutes. Yeah. So, what do you think? Could you play younger than 10? Um, I think 10's a good age. I think, I mean, you might be able to. It always depends. Uh, we've had this discussion, I don't know how many times now. It <laughs> always depends on how advanced uh, your player is. I mean, an 8-year-old well, that is used to playing games, I think, could probably handle it. You could game. definitely, you could take this a lot younger than 8 if you want to help them, as it's just a dice game with similar concepts to, you know, things like Yahtzee. So... It all depends on the player. Now, what are you going to be doing in Sword Art Online, the board game? Well, you're rolling dice. This is a dice game. And what you need to do is clear the different levels of Uncrad Castle as you rise all the way up to the top until you get to the final battle. Now, if anyone dies during any of the encounters, you will lose. Now, one of the interesting things about Sword Art Online is the switch mechanic. Now, that's adapted from the anime series. So, if you didn't know, this is popular anime series you can find out on Crunchyroll, Netflix, a few other places. And this just focuses on the first arc of the first season, which is the uh, most well-known. So as you're going up Ironcrad Castle, well, you need to fight those bosses and you need to pull off your switch. How do you do that? Well, you gotta use all of your dice. If you don't use all of your dice, well, then the enemies will have opportunities to deal damage to you. And well, that's how you're gonna die. And some of them have some really nasty effects and after you clear stages, you will level up, gain more abilities and items, and even a support character. I think that's enough talking about the game. I've covered everything. Did yep. I miss something? I don't think so. All right, well, we'll save the rest for our review. So, Julie, what time is it? Time to grab our drink. Grab our fellow... Uh, our well, best friend. Just keep our it. Our best friend. We're going to take it to the table one more time. Take it to the table one more time. I was trying to figure out a way to mention that we were maybe trapped in a death game because that's what Sword Art Online is, but couldn't find a quick slogan or something. Well, so you've said there. it now, so we're good. Now let's take a look at the components for Sword Art Online, the Sword of Fellows. Now this is the deluxe version of the game in case you see any differences with your components. Now here we do have the six different characters. We've got Silica, whose special ability lets you essentially recharge someone else's special ability. We've got Lisbeth, whose special ability lets you take a value on dice. So for example, these three D6s and either lower it or raise it. You can't really raise a D6, a six, but you get what I mean. You could lower all of these to a five. We've got Egil, whose special ability is to change up to two standard dice to five. Kirito, who lets you change a die, a standard die to one or a six. We've got Asuna, who lets you flip two standard dice to their opposite sides, meaning you could flip over this three and it would become a four. And then Klein, who lets you change up to two standard dice to uh, two. Now, Silica and Elizabeth both have special tokens. They're double-sided. It can be either a times two or a plus two. Now, it's going to depend on the sword skill that you pull off. You'll see all of those details right there. Silica's got, this one was let you essentially, I forget what the symbol is, I believe it's 
recharge a die, then you've got the uh, the shield. So you got some cool abilities for all of them. Actually, let's just take a look on the back of Silica's card. So you get some details about the character and then an explanation as to what the sword skill is. And you'll also notice that each character has their own character die. Now, if you're looking closely, you'll notice that we have two silica dies. We're missing the Asuna one. We have contacted Japan Anime Games to get a replacement. Uh, let's take a look at Kirito's dice. So you'll see it's got different values. So a lot higher chances of getting sixes, few twos. So these custom die will come in later in the game. And there are their sword skills, as you can see, with the damage value. Also, the health value is here across the top. We'll just lift up Kirito to make it a little easier for, for you to see. So health value, ability value, damage value. And once again, on the back, you get some explanation as to how the character works and a little bit of background about them from their place in the story. Now, before we go too far, too much further, I wanted to take a look at the rule book. So here is the manual. Now, I do like the fact that it's small. It's easy to go through flips out and if you're wondering uh, just had some questions about some stuff like the tokens so you can see there's Lisbeth tokens the shield and then the control so that's that's what this is the die control lets you take an additional reroll if I'm not mistaken oh sorry additional reroll turn any die to inside of your choice and of course now that we've taken a look at the heroes we want to take a look at the villains but before we do that let's take a look at a few other things that we have for the heroes so we do have just the regular six-sided dice we've got the black for the main white for support we've got the damage tokens which come into dominations of ten five two and one they're double-sided so the ones become twos the fives become tens now this tracker is just related to this just to let you know what level you're at and these are the ability tokens. But while we're jumping over here, I want to take a look at some of the items and support cards. So eventually you'll, you'll be able to acquire Yui. You may get some equipment like the Code of Midnight, which will let you reduce some damage. These consumables, they can be used by anyone. An ability potion, healing crystal, holy soul returner crystal in case someone dies. We've got the Ring of Agility, which is a great card, lets you get an extra reroll. We've got the Dark Repulsor, which increases your damage by one. This is one of Kirito's signature swords and uh, can really make the last encounter easier. And as you can see, another uh, ability potion. So these are the items that you may gain. Now, each section of Ironcrad has different villains. You're only gonna be having four sections when you play the game. So you, this is always gonna be randomized. So here we've got Disaster in the Trap Room. You can see what you have to do to clear it. We've got Ambush the PK Guild. We showed you that little token over here, the one that uh, tracks where you are. So you have two levels to go with the Ambush of the PK Guild. And then the lower section fight has got multiple levels that you have to go through. So that's what we get for the lower section of the castle. Here we've got the middle section. So Crimson Bloodthirst. Also, if there's any special conditions, you'll notice that at the bottom here, you also see the amount of dice that you can use, how many main and how many support dice. We then have the quest for rare materials and Battle of the Holy Knight. We've got the upper section. So we've got the Blue-Eyed Demon, a real standout encounter from the show, the Skeleton Cutter, and the trap of the, de the death guard. Now this one has a specific encounter, so take a look. It's uh, it's pretty tricky when you're uh, going through it. And then lastly, we just need to take a look at the final battle card. So for the end of the world, where you're going to be taking on Heathcliff, Akiko Kayaba. So you've got two different levels, and there are special rules for this final encounter. The game really goes out of its way to make the ending almost identical to that of the anime series. So there you have it. We've gone over all the components for Sword Art Online, the Sword of Fellows. Keep it right here as I'm now going to teach you how to set up the game and then how to play. Now, how do you set up Sword Art Online, the Sword of Fellows? Well, depending on your player count, you're going to select your characters. We've decided to teach you a four player game. After playing the game at a few different player counts, uh, four definitely feels like what it is designed and balanced around. And even if you are a lower number of players, controlling four characters is really not that difficult. So you're going to need to have your upper section, middle section, and lower section. Now, you're going to randomize it, shuffling it up. 
and then just pulling one out, returning the rest of the box. The final battle is always the same. You're gonna to wanna to have a nice stash of tokens and you're gonna go through your cards and you're gonna make sure that the UE support card is taken out and available because you will acquire this as you move through Aincrad Castle. You also need to have your dice. Uh, I have not taken out the character dice because we're not gonna be using it during the how to play. We're probably only gonna go through one section of the castle. We're then gonna also need to have our token here to track the level. Go ahead and flip over your encounter, set the token at the level, and you're ready to play. Now, as you move through the castle, each level you gain an item, and you will also level up getting access to more of your sword skills. So these dice, are only gonna come through once you've cleared the upper section and are going into the final battle. That's why we do not have the character dice. I've just set them aside for the sake of the how to play. We're not gonna be using any of the blue dice, just the white and the black dice for the main and the support. So there you have it. As you can see, the game is very easy to set up. It's very much portable. Now let's teach you how to play the game. So now I'm gonna teach you how to play Sword Art Online, the Sword of Fellows. You notice we only have three of each type of dice. That's because that's what we require for disaster in the trap room. The others are off camera. And the blue character dice, as we're not gonna get that far in the how to play, have been returned to the game box. Now each player has their ability tokens, showing how many times they can use it per section of Einkrad Castle. Now there is an easy variant. If you're learning the game, you can use it on every turn. So to start the game, Kirito is gonna be our main, taking the black dice with Asuna, his support with the white dice. What's important to note here is that all these, well not every hero, sorry, every enemy has an effect. So this one says AOE, meaning if I fail, all characters are gonna take two damage and it has a reroll of minus one. So normally I'd be able to reroll twice after the initial roll. In this case, I can only roll once. So we're gonna go ahead and roll Kirito's dice. One, two, three, that's pretty terrible. Uh, sort of coming together, so we've got Two threes and two twos. And the one two is just not great. Now we can use Kirito's ability and that's actually what I'm going to do as there's no defense because you really want to pull off the switch. So we're going to take the ability, we're going to just move it off camera. We can take this to a one, meaning we've now chained together two vertical arcs. So as you can see here, these are the sword skills. We can get four of a kind, two of a kind, or six in order to do damage. So we've got a total of 12 damage that we will then deal to the disaster in the trap room. Now we ignore the damage value of two here and the AOE because we've actually used all of our dice. That is the goal. So that lets us switch. So at this point, Kirito is exhausted. Asuna now becomes the lead who will then pair up with another character. And in this case, we're gonna use uh, Lisbeth. So I will roll dice for Asna. And not too shabby. So Asna's abilities are different than Kirito's. The damage value is different as well. Hers chain up, so linear, tri thrust, quadruple pain. So you're trying to get two in a row, three in a row, four in a row. And we also have Star right here, which is five in a row. So right now we do have one, two, three, and four. So at this point, better off to just re-roll, see what we get. Right, so we've got one and two, so not bad. We actually pull off another switch. So with the quadruple pain, we do five damage, and the linear is one, so that's another six damage. 
Got it down to the trap room. So Asana is now exhausted. Meaning we've got Silica and Lizbeth. So let's start with Lizbeth's dice. Six, two, one. So her, she needs odds. So basically ones, threes, and fives. So we've got two threes. It's not bad, but we actually need three threes. So the five is okay, but not great. We're going to try another reroll here. And yuck, we really did not get what we needed. However, let's see if there's something that we can maybe do. Because Asuna can use her ability to flip up to two standard dice to the opposite side. So the opposite side of two is five. So we'll get rid of her ability token. <clears throat> Meaning we're actually still in a good spot. So we pull off a rumbling strike. We pull off, <clears throat> sorry, we we're not able to pull off the heavy impact. But her smash here requires just odd. So this is a collective of three damage plus five. So that gives us a total of eight. That brings us up to 20. Thought there was 20, I forgot. So we were at 26 damage. So Lizbeth is now exhausted. Meaning we go to Silica. Uh, she's the last character. She can chain with anyone essentially at this point. You're going to refresh all the characters because they can then choose to chain with anyone. Now the person that's going to take over in the middle section will be the player that is the partner of Silica. And it's always fun to start with, uh, with Kirito, so I'm just going to keep it going around the circle there. So we're going to use... Silica, so sixes are good, fours are good, twos are better. You get one, sixes, and fives. E, not great. Well, we've got one reroll. We, yeah, we got to reroll all of these. We're going to keep that one because it's a damage. And here we go. So we've got sixes. <clears throat> we can use the four. We can't really use the five so much. So this is a good example here because now I'm going to show what happens when we do not pull off the, the switch. So for six, we do three damage only. It is healing, but unfortunately no one needs healing. And then we do another two damage. Now this will kill, well, defeat the encounter. However, damage is still dealt, so keep that in mind. So this is AOE damage. You'll have to, at this point, it doesn't really matter with regards to dealing damage to characters because no one took any damage, but this could potentially kill you because you didn't pull off the switch. Since this die is not used, all the characters from an AOE effect are going to take two damage. Now, this, grab the 10 there. Well, we know we killed the, include the encounter, so we'll just take it from there. And as you can see, we've now cleared the encounter. We can just sweep all of this off. Flip this face down. Any damage, this should be a two, is now removed. All characters regain their abilities, and we draw an item, which in this case is an ability potion, which can then be used by any of the players to refresh one of their abilities. We move into the middle section of Eimkrad. So we've got the quest for rare materials. We set up the new encounter, and we will continue. Now, Yui would be gained after we get through the middle section. As we have passed the lower section, our character is now level 50. We do have access to the level 50 abilities. So we have gotten stronger going, moving up along the way. So there you have it. That is how you play Sword Art Online, these sort of fellows. We went through one round. I think you got a good idea as to what, uh, what you're gonna be doing. Now, the only thing that I need to clarify is if, for example, you do end up with an item, 
That item will be assigned to one player only. So you can give it to Asna, Kirito, Silica, whoever's in the game. And they're the only one that can use it, whereas consumables are just visible jointly and anyone that needs it can access it to use it. And you'll see that in this level, we're going to add a fourth black die, but we're still using only three support dice. So that's the game. Now, Julie, now we'll be coming back at you with our review of it. Sword Art Online, the board game. Sword of Fellows. What did you think of the game? And, well, maybe we should always tell people who's the fan and who's not the fan. So, uh, Jason and our, um, our almost nine-month-old uh, are fans of Sword Art Online. Uh, yes, the little he man, loves the intro songs. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the little man loves the music uh, to it, uh, because ever since he was born, uh, Jason has watched these uh, with him around, put him to sleep. Uh, so that's to say those two are fans, and that's all I know of Sword Art Online, <laughs> is that it has played in the background <laughs> while uh, we're trying to put the little one to sleep. Yes, well, he would wake up, and I put him back to sleep, so it'd be about 10 o'clock at night, and he'd probably watch about an episode with me. He loves all the colors. It's great for uh, little ones, the all the flashing colors in anime. He loved that. He loved the music. He'd fall asleep, and then I'd, you know, watch another episode just to make sure he was sleeping. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that being said, that's all I know of it. I didn't watch them. Uh, I don't watch them. I'm not an anime fan. Oh, I'll get you to like one one day. He's been saying that for over five years now. Yeah, well, you've never given one a chance. You just look at it and say, nope. Hey, he says the same thing for some of the stuff I like, so. I at least watch part of it. I have watched part of it. Anyways. Not one I thought you'd like. In any case, let's go. Continue on with the review. But yes. Uh, so it is a dice chucking game, um, and it basically does that very you know, you're chucking dice you're assigning it uh to different characters it reminded me a little bit of um it's a little it's similar to uh one that we have played recently i disagree on that actually i think any dice chucking game is going to be similar i don't find that the mechanics well, you're thinking about sailor moon crystal dice challenge i think the fact that it's anime and you're rolling dice. Well, no, but, but each of the characters also had. So what's different here, I would, I guess, I would say uh, to to clarify, is that each of the characters has uh, different series. A little bit like you said, you you compared it to Yahtzee, where you have to assign dice, uh, and based on what you've assigned it to, you get a point value. Yeah, right. But if you value. look at games that we have, like Gotham City Under Siege, the Batman game where you're rolling dice and then assigning it to do abilities. Like, I just, I don't see the connection directly between Sailor Moon and this. It reminded me of Sailor Moon. That's I think that's saying. just because of the, the theme. Maybe. So in this case, I mean, we've played, we played it two and we played it four. I can definitely say I oh. preferred it at four player. Yes. And I think the other reason why I know it reminded you a little bit of Sailor Moon Crystal. Spoiler alert. It's a little disappointing. <laughs> You went there. Uh, so basically, we played with the different characters, and they're not all created equal. Um, basically, you were saying it's very thematic to the show, but some of the characters are stronger than others. And some do get a lot stronger as things progress, uh, notably us now. Like, her character is a little weaker, but her higher level attacks are very strong, which definitely follows the pattern of the show. You do have to play as a Kirito, and he's definitely the strongest character. Like, hands down, he hits the hardest. And it, it makes sense. He is the best player of Sword Art Online. He's the one that clears the, the game. So, thematically, it works. It just can be a little bit off-putting for other characters. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not all useful and that you're going to not have fun playing them. It's just you're getting something that's unbalanced. And I think, uh, you know, what it actually reminds me of a little bit is uh, Big Trouble in Little China, the the board game. There was the one character, Wang, when he's he's just doing everything. It's like, perfectly thematic to the movie. Wang's doing everything. Jack Burton's just kind of there in the background. Sorry if you're a fan of that uh, movie. It's the truth. But, uh, yeah, so you get that. It may be a little too thematic. I guess that's, that's a way to put well, it. Well, so for me, I mean, it was a little... Uh, when we played it just two players and, and you played that main character, it was just a little boring for me because you always, um, 
you know, you were you were always hitting harder, and then I would play my character, and and you know, she'd be like, poke it with a dagger, whereas you're like slashing it with a sword. Uh, so uh, it's that was that was, I guess, a little bit of a disappointment for me when we were, and also if we continue on the two player. Um, Okay, I'm going to go right to the most disappointing... The one, the one thing I wanted to mention, and just because you talked about the two-player, and because I also played it solo, just to give some commentary, when you're playing solo, it's the same as two-player. The game is clearly designed around four players. The way you use your abilities and the fact that you've got limited uses of the abilities, trying to do that two-player, you can really struggle unless you're hitting very hard on your opening attacks. Whereas when you have that limit at four players... Uh, depending on the characters that you select, you're still going to do very well. Typically, we weren't taking damage until we almost cleared the level. Yeah, versus the two-player where we were taking a lot more damage. Yes. Uh, and, and you really have to really be hitting all of your dice. Uh, yeah, you really got to switch all the time in two players because two misses can essentially kill you. Um, so, I mean... I think the most frustrating part for me, uh, if we go right... I mean, it... it it is a ch dice chucking game, and that's great. That's what if you if you enjoy that, that's you know it's fun. It plays quickly. Uh, you're chucking dice. It's not complicated. Uh, besides, if you're having really bad rolling, then you know mm -hmm. that that can affect it. For me, it's the fact it's the end game. I think that's where everything fell apart for me. And I I know you have a lot more to say about it. I'll let you describe it. Uh, maybe if you want to go into detail about what happens when you're we're trying to play that yeah. last boss so the end game mimics the anime perfectly it ends up being a one-on-one -on -one fight between kirito and uh i'm drawing a blank on the name oh my god it's <laughs> the final Kiri, no i think i think it's uh kayaba akiko there we go sorry i had to get that out it's going to drive me bonkers i can remember his character name because you fight him in two stages you fight the avatar that he has in sword art online which plays normally then when you have to fight him as the last boss well he has one health and 27 defense which means there are only limited ways for you to win and the only player that can act is kirito and what's ridiculous about it and it, it's thematic but it's still ridiculous is that you need all eight dice to do it and the only way you're going to be rolling those uh, those eight dice, at least from what I understood, unless there's something really unclear in the rule book, is when people start dying. Because it says that Kirito acts, he's going to be rolling only his five main dice. So you roll your five and five dice because you have gotten your character die at that time. So four and five, you can't defeat him at all with five dice. You need eight. You have to get 28 damage. Now the, the option to do that, you have to have either the Dark Repulsor Sword, which will give you an extra damage, or you need to roll essentially, well, Yahtzee. all ones, or all six, yeah, Yahtzee. And you need to, because in this phase, they will add all the damage up, so you need to do the 27 plus your Rage Spike to get one damage off. It's incredibly thematic to the show, that's how it ended. I love the fact that it's in the game. However, as anyone that's designed video games based on property, you know, licenses, things like that, no, you change the ending. You don't copy the ending from the show if it's not going to be great for your game. Or you will have an option where it's like, here's the show ending, but hey, you want more? We've got more. I don't understand why there wasn't a second level where it could say, hey, pick the anime ending or... Keep going with this fun, cool version that I've created, inspired by the anime. But just the fact that the only one character can take part, and there's really limited ways to defeat the character, and you're trying to get one roll, like all sixes or all ones and a six, it's it's pretty dull. I it's really a letdown when it, when it comes to it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it it made it you know like you're participating. Uh you're participating in the play all the way through until you get to that last one and then you're no longer participating yeah, in trying to... because it goes co-op, co co-op, solo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the other characters are there as, as buffers. It could be that I got it wrong in the, that they're supposed to roll their support dice and can use their abilities, but it it's not really clear in the rulebook. And in any case, it wouldn't really make much sense for a mono a mono fight for other characters to be able to uh, interact. It's almost mainly like they're just throwing themselves in front of you as shields until... 
they're all dead. You can set the support die to any value you want, and then you roll your dice. Yep. That's all I really have to say. So it's a good little dice chucking game, but I'd say the randomness is a little bit too much on the high side with regards to getting the dice. The equipment as well. I mean, there's three pieces of equipment that are great, but typically you're going to get some consumables that are just okay. Now, I'm not saying that you don't want consumables because, hey, if someone dies, one of them will bring you back to life and let you keep going. Very valuable. Also, the ability to heal is very valuable. It's just that the way the game's balanced, that extra reroll equipment, extra damage, I think are really good. Taking one less damage to me just seems kind of pointless with the way damage is dealt out uh, in this game. I don't have much else to add, honestly. I mean, it, it is it is a dice chucking game and it succeeds, it succeeds at that. Yeah, I, I think the game does exactly what it intended to do, which is to be a dice chucking version of the first part of season one of Sword Art Online, the most popular part. But beyond that, I don't think you're getting too much new to the to the genre. I do like the the variability between all the characters, and that's really cool. It does give you a few reasons to bring this to the table. But in any case, I mean this is I'd almost say this is this is convention fair. This is filler time killing game. You take it out, you play when you got a few minutes, and then you're gonna put it away and you'll Well I mean about that's it. one advantage to it. It is fast. It's fast, small box, you wanna play it on an airplane? Play it on an airplane. <laughs> I guess you can chuck your dice in the box itself, yeah. Uh, so for me, I'm ready to rate it. Are you? Yeah, go ahead. I'm so for gonna... me, it's a it's a six. It passes. It, that's uh, as for all the reasons I said before. It's it's fast. Uh, it is a dice chucking game. It it does what it intends to do. I mean, uh, I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not a fan of the anime, so it doesn't bring anything extra for me. So uh, th oh, that's from an outsider. That is my perspective. And I agree with you. It's a six. And uh, I mean, we've graded games that have had like. Maybe less issues more harshly, but then they, but those games I felt just didn't quite come together. This succeeds at being exactly what it is. It tells you on the box, and you've got that exact game. I would have probably given this a higher score if there'd been a little bit more variety towards the end game, but that end game really just knocks it down to being an okay game. If you're a fan of Sword Art Online and you want a quick dice checking game, pick this up. If you have no idea what Sword Art Online is, well, guess what? This game for you would probably be like closer to a three or a four. You're not gonna really enjoy this unless you really like dice chuckers. Then it'll be just an okay game that you added to your collection. So I give it a thumbs up in terms of succeeding at its goal, but Nothing special. And on that note, Julie, what time is it? It is time to remind people to like, comment, uh, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we have some new com content for you. Yes. And take a look. I was going to say, you can also comment. We'd yes. love to hear. Yes. Comment, please. Let us know. Are you a fan of Sword Art Online? Love to hear it. Uh, love to hear it. Hopefully, they'll be doing maybe some more stuff with some of the advanced stories. We get a more intricate game. I'd love to actually just try to beat all 100 levels of the castle with miniatures. She'd like that. <laughs> so take a look down below in the video description you'll find links to all of our social media feeds facebook twitter instagram so if you'd like to see pictures of us playing sword art online well they'll be down there in those feeds you may also see what's coming up on the channel and then if you are looking for a copy of the game take a look down there as well as we have a link to our discount code at multizone.ca. It is a great board game store in Gatineau, Quebec. They ship all over the place. So check it out. You will get 10% off your next purchase. Well, any purchase when you use that code. And it's a great way for you to support the channel because a portion of that purchase will be returned to us. So we don't do Patreon. All we get to YouTube ad, ad revenue. Think about giving us a hand and getting a new game in the process. And then popping up in front of us are going to be links to some of our previously released content. Over here will be our most recent release. And what should we put over here, Julie? Well, we talked about it, so why don't we put... Uh, um, Sailor Moon, Sailor Crystal, Moon. Dice Challenge. Fine. I really don't want to, but fine. Well, what else would you like to put there? Something good from Japan Anime Games. Oh, uh, you know what? We It will be... The new game that we're going to be reviewing, because it's also a dice chucking game, but this one is competitive. So, you'll see what it is. It'll be a surprise. Until then, it'll be Sailor Moon. Compromise.
Happy life, happy life. Sounds good. So on that note, it's time to grab our drink. Grab our best friend and fellow survivor, because we survived the game. And we're going to keep playing games. Keep playing games. We'll maybe, play ga maybe not this one right away. It'll come not back right away. Out. It'll come back out one day when we've got some time to kill or we're uh, traveling. Thank <laughs> you.